Hello and a very warm welcome to our daily service. I wonder how you're feeling. If I'm honest, at this time of year, as the summer holidays are rapidly coming to an end, I'm always rather daunted because there's a huge mountain heading up into the autumn and so easily I can get overwhelmed by all that I'm going to have to do. Well, that's a very good moment to stop as we try to do in these daily services and to look away from ourselves and to look up to the great God who is lovingly in control of all things. Let's focus on him as together we say these words from the beginning of Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Loving Father, as things begin to get very busy again for many of us in a little while, Help us to keep our eyes and our hearts focused on you, the great and awesome and loving creator, the sovereign redeemer, who is in complete control of all things. Keep us living for you and always praising you. Amen. This week we've been looking at some verses from the beginning of Romans chapter 1. and We're now going to say together a creed based on that part of the Bible. Together we say, we believe in God the Father, from whom grace and peace proceed, whom we serve with our whole heart. We believe in Jesus Christ, as to his humanity, born a descendant of David. We believe in the Holy Spirit, by whose power Jesus was declared to be the Son of God through his resurrection from the dead. We believe in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're looking at Romans chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. I'm going to read those verses now. I am a debtor, both to Greek and non-Greek, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the to the Gentile. You're probably familiar with the so-called I am sayings of the Lord Jesus. They're found in John's Gospel. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd and so on. Here we find what some have called the I am sayings of the Apostle Paul. Three times he says I am, I am, I am. But just look at them. Verse 14, I am a debtor, both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. I'm a debtor. He's talking about the obligation he senses deep within him, given by God. An obligation to share the gospel with everyone, of whatever ethnicity, Greek or non-Greek, of whatever type, wise or foolish. Now, of course, the Apostle Paul had a special commission from God to, the, to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Gentiles simply means nations, all the non-Jews. We don't have that particular call of God as an apostle, but all of us, if we're Christians, if we're following the Lord Jesus, have been called to be his witnesses. There's only one gospel. There's only one way to God. There's only one way to be right with him for eternity, and that is the gospel, and therefore we have an obligation. We are debtors, in a sense, to share the good news with others. Just imagine, in the early days of the pandemic, someone very quickly found a COVID vaccine and just kept it to themselves. That would be unthinkable, wouldn't it? Now they'd have an obligation to share it with the world. And of course that obligation wouldn't be a burden. It would be a great joy to say, I found a cure. And so it should be not just an obligation, but a joy for us to share the good news with others. Paul says, I'm a debtor. Next, I am eager. Verse 15. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. 
We've got in Jesus Christ, in the gospel, the best news in the world. What a privilege to share it with others. I used to be a very quiet teenager. And then I met Jesus. And I discovered the wonder of the gospel. And I found my mouth was opened. I wanted to tell people about him. I wish that same eagerness had always been there in my Christian life. If we don't share the good news of Jesus with our family members, our friends, our neighbours, our colleagues, then who will? Let's be praying that God would give within us a deep desire, an eagerness to spread the good news of Jesus to all people. Well, we're often held back, aren't we? And one of the things that holds me back is I'm, I'm worried, what will they think of me if they know I believe all these things? Which leads us to the third of the I am sayings of Paul. I'm a debtor, I'm eager, and then third, I'm not ashamed, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. I am not ashamed. Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia, used to have a wig, but she was so embarrassed about this she didn't want it to get out that she locked her hairdresser in her palace for three whole years so he couldn't get out and gossip. And it feels as if sometimes we are so embarrassed about the good news of Jesus. We don't want people to know that we're really committed to Jesus, that we keep the gospel locked up, as it were, in a cage in our hearts, rather than letting it out. Maybe part of our reticence is we're worried that the gospel feels a bit weak. We just assume if we told people about Jesus and the good news of Christ and him crucified, others would just dismiss it. They'd never believe it. And that holds us back. But remember, this gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. It's got mighty power. It transformed Paul from an oppressor and persecutor of Christians to the man who went around the known world proclaiming the good news about Jesus. It changed his life. It's changed my life. It's changed your life. It can change our friends' lives as well. So let's pray for God's help to get it out and so that we too can say what Paul says. I am a debtor. I'm under obligation. I'm eager. I am not ashamed. With these things in mind, let's spend some time praying. Let us pray. In the quietness of our hearts, let's begin by asking God to work in us so that we might share that sense of debt and of eagerness, that we might not be ashamed of the gospel. And then in the quietness, let's bring before the Lord the names of those we most long to come and know the Lord Jesus. And let's pray for opportunities sensitively to speak to them. And now two prayers for evangelism. Our Lord Jesus Christ, renew in us the spirit of faith and service. Enlighten our minds to understand your message and inflame our hearts with such love towards you that your word on our lips may be mighty to overthrow the powers of darkness and to turn the feet of many into the way of light and peace to the glory of your name. Amen. Show us, O Lord and Master, how we may effectively present the wonderful news of the Gospel to those who don't know you. May your Holy Spirit fill us with love, and grant that our lives as well as our lips may so commend you to them, that they may come to find in you the way to the Father, the truth that sets them free, and the life that is life indeed, for the glory of your name. Amen. If we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, then we will know the wonder of his transforming power in our hearts. And so the words of testimony that we find in this song are words that we too can echo in our hearts. Let's join in as this song is sung.
I'm so glad you joined us for the daily service. We've received an encouragement, a challenge, if you like, to share the good news of Jesus. That can be daunting, but wonderfully, the Bible tells us we're not alone. Listen to these words that Jesus promised to his disciples just before he ascended into heaven. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Well, as we face the daunting nature of everything getting it going again in the next week or two, let's be hugely encouraged by that great truth. Jesus is always with us. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love now and forevermore. Amen.